Hey, what up? Today we've got a big countdown. Today we're taking a look at the top 10 buildings in the world. All right, let's get stuck into it. All right, coming in number 10, we've got 411 Vulture Street. What's that I hear you ask? That's the building we see next to the Gabba. You've always wanted to know what it is. It's a commercial building, 12 stories high, has the offices of epilepsy, Queensland National Council of Women Queensland and the Queensland Cricketers Club. There's also a tasty little eatery there on the ground floor. Epic building. All right, coming at number nine, we've got the Pyramids of Giza. Man, the boys from Cairo came through with the goods on these bad boys. About 118 of them have been discovered throughout Egypt, but I'm talking about the big ones. The Great Pyramid of Giza, built for the big dog, Khafu. So epic. All right, coming number eight, we've got the build-up at the start of the Avicii song, Levels, also called ID, I think, but yeah, here it is. <music> Epic build-up, we know that there's a massive drop coming and it's gonna shut parties down. All right, coming at number seven, we've got the Bake Shop in Newport Beach, a rock and roll venue just there on the pier. Death Cab for Cutie, the Killers play there. Seth Cohen famously works there one summer and falls in love and crushes hard on the manager who's hot as hell. Her name's Alex. There she is, what a woman. Great venue, great building. All right, coming at number six, we've got the Toretto house where Dom and Mia live. They grew up there their whole, life, whole lives. Double story house there in California. Spacious backyard with plenty of room for dinner with La Familia. And there's a garage out the back. And no matter what time it is, there's always an American muscle car in there. That's a family heirloom that is in need of some serious work to bring it to its former glory. All right, coming in number five, we've got the Empire State Building, 102 story building that was built in 1930. Only actually took a year and one month to build, which is pretty crazy. It was the tallest building until 1970. Uh, some of the construction picks are so epic. Look how high up they are with no um, safety stuff. 3,500 people built it. Uh, between three and 40 people died in the making of it. The numbers are always reported differently from different outlets, but you know, still pretty crazy. They actually had to knock down the old wall of Astoria to make way for the um, Empire State in 1929. And then they rebuilt the current wall of Astoria and Park Avenue in 1931. Probably the right move to build it and knock down the old wall of Astoria because if they didn't, Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan would never have met at the top of it in Sleepless in Seattle. Kerry Grant and Deborah Kerr would have never agreed to meet there on a fair to remember. And then Chuck Bass and Blair Waldorf would never have agreed to meet there in Gossip Girl. Absolute beast of a building. All right, coming in number four, we've got Orthanc. It's the black, impenetrable tower at the center of Isengard, actually built by the Dunedain. I'll take you to the third age when the Numenorians who habited the tower and its surrounding area moved eastward and gave the keys to Gondor and Minas Tirith. Some men of Gondor were then tasked of going to Orthanc uh, and failed in trying to maintain the tower. The wild men of Dunland attacked and took over the tower. Now these assholes attacked the Westfold and the women and children across the, the Great Plains of Rohan from there. These assholes starved out without any food and up dying. So they got what came to them in the end. Sar Saruman then approached Minas Tirith and said he'd take care of the place. So Gondor gave him the keys without question. Boy, he was this a mistake. Little did they know what he would do. Little did they know that his mind would fall under the control of Sauron. After Gandalf refused to join Saruman's side and become evil, he trapped him up on the roof on the top of Orthanc until he told him where the ring was. Later on, Gandalf gets saved by the eagles. Now, after the battle and the ants took over Rising Guard, Saruman refused to come down. And as we know, all thank is impenetrable. So they were just on a massive standoff for ages. But eventually he came down and gave them the keys in exchange for his, I guess, escaping and leaving of all thank. Saruman then came to the Shire and became a bit of a con man around there. Following the Battle of Bywater, Frodo, after his victory, then banished Saruman and said, don't you ever come back here again. Probably the only good thing Frodo's ever done, to be honest. Before Saruman could leave Bywater in the Shire, Grim and Wormtongue stuck him and stabbed him and cut his throat, which was pretty cool. 
uh, right in the middle of Bag End on, on Frodo's doorstep. Um, the Tower of War thanks still stands today. All right, coming at number three, we've got the Sao Paulo Museum of Art. Look how cool that building looks. Built in 1968, four vertical columns, two lateral columns supporting uh, the building. It sits eight meters off the ground and is two stories high. It was designed to be like a container for art. So it's open floor plans across two stories, the top story being the more important one and the main one. But yeah, it just looks super cool from the outside. Nice red bars there, looks epic. All right, coming at number two, we've got the Patola Palace, which is so sick. It's a fortress in Tibet that was built in 1649. It was the winter palace of the Dalai Lamas from then until 1959. And it's been a museum ever since. It has walls three meters to five meters thick throughout the whole building. It's 13 stories high, contains a thousand rooms, 10,000 shrines and 200,000 statues. So sick, how the fuck did they build that in 1649? Looks so cool. All right, coming in at number one, we've got the Shandor building from the movie Ghostbusters, located at 55 Central Park West. I still have no idea what the addresses in New York mean, how there's numbers and letters and Anyway, the top half of the building, as you can obviously see, is not real, and that's the part that's made up from the movie, but the bottom half is real. Uh, it's a really significant building as it's a super conductive antenna and a portal to our realm, created by Ibo Shandor and the cult of Goza for their divine master Goza in his destructive form. Go crazy when they bring him in. Then Dan Aykroyd and the fellas and the Ghostbusters fuck them up and save the day, but yeah, sick building. All right, that's it for top 10 buildings. Let me know what you thought in the comments. And yeah, have a good day. I'll see you next time.